Don't adjust your dial. This is what talk radio is supposed to sound like. With your hosts, Dave Carney and Chad Forster, this is Live Las Vegas. And welcome to Live Las Vegas here on News Talk 720 KDWN. I'm Dave Carney, joined by my co-host, Chad Forster, with you on a beautiful Friday afternoon here in the city that never sleeps. No, that's not New York. That's Las Vegas. That's Vegas. We took it, that baby. from New York. We, we sure did. We stole that along with uh, half of their, their mafia. <laughs> we just decided when they come the out good here, ones. we're taking that We in. took the good ones. Yeah, that's right. Good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, welcome to the program here, guys. Big day for us on Live in Las Vegas. We've got a lot of great stuff to talk about. There has been an amazing week of news coming out. Some of it good, some of it not so good, some of it downright hilarious, and we're going to get to a lot of that. What we're going to start off with, though, today, guys, uh, is blazing a trail, and maybe not the trail they had hoped it would be blazing, but it's definitely uh, going down in flames. We'll pick it up in the live news. And now, and now for an all-new look at stories from around the world and around the town, here's the live news. All right, live news coming at you here. And, uh, Chad, we're going to start off today with uh, the meteoric slide. I would like to say <laughs> rise, but the meteoric slide of Hillary Rodham Clinton's uh, book called Hard Choices, which dropped to a meager 48,000 units sold after its first week uh, led to about 98,000, or excuse me, about 100,000 copies sold. Um, Chad, making this one of the biggest disappointments in the year for the publisher, Simon & Schuster, who paid Hillary Clinton a whopping $14 million uh, advance. Are you surprised the political memoir of a State Department head and former first lady doesn't go flying off the shelves? No, I'm not. I think that at this point, people, had, their threshold has been met, not just with Hillary, and not just I'm not just bashing the left or the Democrats or whatever, but on both sides. We're just, they're just tired of hearing the same old crap, not to mention she's a liar. She was on uh, whatever news organization she was having that interview saying that she was dead broke after they got out of, out of the White no, House. Right. And clearly, that's not the case. As a matter of fact, <laughs> since 2001, I just read something where Bill Clinton has made like $105 million just as a speaker. Oh, yeah. And Hillary Clinton, she likes to make a little extra money as a speaker as well. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you saw this, but UNLV uh, student body president is kind of upset because he just found out that Hillary, when she comes here to UNLV to do a little speaking, is going to get a nice fat check for $225,000. But she's broke, though. Well, and and don't forget that UNLV, uh, also one of these institutions which doesn't like to spend, uh, you know, where it doesn't have to, especially on frivolous-seeming higher education uh, benefits. Now, when you look at something like this, I mean, are you with the student body president uh, here, Elias uh, Bellahoon, who says that uh, this is, you know, a a waste of money, that we appreciate people, obviously, coming to the university, raising money for the university is always a good thing, but at the tune of $225,000, he feels it's a little excessive. Now, this is a kid saying this uh what do you think uh, you know what do you think that the faculty think about it Uh, well i think it's completely ridiculous you have to get off we have to stop putting people on pedestals no matter what side of the fence they're on they're just people okay what what is she really going to bring to the table that's worth two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars that by the way i believe is for some kind of fundraiser for student for you know uh, tuition or whatever anyway at the at the school why are you spending two hundred twenty five thousand dollars on 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 her she should be doing it pro bono yeah, well, and, and, and there was also a, a comment here uh, from another one of the uh, the student body members saying that uh, when we heard $225,000, we weren't so thrilled. Uh, we hope that Hillary Clinton uh, commits to higher education and returns part or whole of the amount she receives for speaking. Now, Chad, you you know that does happen at some times. I mean, uh, oftentimes there will be large large retainers involved with hiring certain speakers, and for various reasons or sure. for various causes, they donate their speaking fee back to the institution. I don't necessarily see Hillary Clinton doing that, nor do I see anybody else really in today's political landscape saying, yeah, I'm going to give you back this money. But I think we're, we're, we're getting to something here. We're, we're getting to a point where... Young people, college people, who who should be fired up about uh, you know this next wave of of, of democratically elected uh, you know representatives are basically saying no, we don't want you out here. We're not going to pay you. It's not worth it to us anymore. Where 10, 15, 20 years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just an absorbent amount. Two hundred twenty five thousand dollars is a lot of money. Do you not agree? I mean, that just seems ridiculous to me. And obviously, this is all start of of Hillary on on the campaign trail. She wants to become president, so she's got this book out that's flopped. It's not helping her situation. She's doing all these speaking engagements, making all this money, crying poor on these interviews. It's, it's. I mean, I just get sick of it. And, and honestly, at some point, nepotism has got to stop. 
in 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 politics. I mean, it really does. I mean, do we need another Clinton in the White House? And and who is going to be your opponent? Jeb Bush. Yeah. So if we have Bush Clinton in 2016, just I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I can't do it anymore. I just can't. I just we need new blood in there. I don't care who it is, but a different name than Bush, a different name than Clinton. We don't need Michelle Obama to run. We need somebody new. Honestly, we need somebody that, that has nothing to do with politics because obviously the politicians that have been in there, you know, for the last 20 years have just messed things up. If, oh, yeah. As you read the news. I well, mean, it, the, the, it, the whole freaking country's falling apart. Right yeah, now. I was going to say it's a it's a very it's a botched, uh, a botched job. And we do have a piece of audio here from Hillary uh, talking about uh, this botched job. What do you have for us, Angie? What difference at this point does it make? Yeah, exactly. What difference at this yeah, point exactly. does it make? Uh, and I think this is kind of where the Tea Party, who has uh, over the last week and a half or two, one of our other lead stories here today on Live in Las Vegas, has started to make some real noise. And this is what I would like to open up and ask our listeners about here today on the program. Number to reach us, 702 257 5396. That's 702 257 KDWN. The question here is, guys, the Tea Party is now threatening to break off into a legitimate third party, uh, which would claim, at least by some rough estimations, Gallup polls and some others, about 25% of the voting electorate. Now, Chad, and again, listeners, 702 257 5396. What are your thoughts on the possibility of the Tea Party breaking off, and what does that do to to future Republicans, future Democrats? Well, I think it's a good thing. Uh, in fact, I would like to see you know four, five, six parties. We need more choice because it's false choice right now. It's Coke versus Pepsi. It's McDonald's versus Burger King. It seems like you have a choice, but in reality, when you look at who contributes to both the Republicans and Democrats, it's almost identical. It's the same jackasses from Wall Street with all this money, and they get what they want, and we're in the shape we're in because the bankers rule the world. That's basically what it comes down to. So the more we can diversify, whether I like the Tea Party or not, does not matter. It diversifies things. I think it's a positive thing, personally. Yeah, there's a possibility that happens in what happened in 92 where Ross Perot kind of split the vote and Clinton ended up winning. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It helps, especially in congressional races, because we need to diversify Congress, because that's really ultimately where laws are supposed to be written, right? Well, not, it's, not, technically, not through yes. executive order, which right. Obama and Bush are both guilty of. And wow. now Obama just got slapped on the wrist by the uh, Supreme Court for some of these nominations that he had made. Uh, nine to nothing, the Supreme Court ruled that uh, Obama's appointments to the National Labor Relations Board was unconstitutional because he claimed that the Senate was at recess. They truly weren't. He knew better than that. This guy taught constitutional law. It's BS. So to me, again, I think the more you diversify, the better things are. Yes, 257 5396 702-257-5396. Uh, I've got a pair of tickets to some great shows over at the House of Blues starting tonight with Boogie Nights, really fun band. So if you've got uh, nothing else to do this evening uh, or you want to pass these on to your kids or grandkids, give us a call. Join the show at 257-5396. The question again, what do you think about the Tea Party breaking off and making their own official third party? Now, I'm with you, Chad. I mean, I think that uh, what we need to see here in American politics is an actual competition. There's... um. You know, some recent polling coming out in the midst of so many of these different scandals. We've got, you know, issues at our border. We've got things going on in Crimea. We've got uh, unrest in the Middle East yet again. And, and folks are feeling, rightly so, uh, really unrepresented. I, and I would say, you know, sufficiently unrepresented to the point where now uh, it is going to force the populace to begin asking for alternative choices. Recently here uh, in Nevada, where we saw one of the lowest voter turnouts that we had ever seen during a uh, during a primary campaign, more people voted none of the above than for any of the other <laughs> candidates that were actually on the ballot. And by an a fairly large number, which is yeah. not surprising to me because I live here in southern Nevada and I see the quality of officials that we, we put up for election. But at the same time, I don't think you could say this is an anomaly just for southern Nevada. This is probably a, a much broader stroke across the entire country. People are choosing none of the above. Well, what are the, what's the latest polling on Congress? Six percent? Uh, yeah. Below six percent? Yeah, I mean, it's like six to you know, six to eight. Uh, President Obama is in the range of George W. Bush towards yeah. the end of his presidency, yeah, exactly. which obviously was garbage. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we've lost confidence. I mean, Bobby Jindal, who is another guy that's probably going to run for president at some point, the governor of Louisiana, has been quoted recently talking about the Tea Party and stuff, that there's going to be a revolution. There's going to be people that are going to 
going to be charging in, in, in at the steps of Congress at some point. I mean, this is a governor. This is potentially a pre- presidential candidate saying this. So we definitely have a divide in this country, and it needs to be solved. And I think the more parties, the better. Well, all right, guys, we're going to step aside, take our first look at traffic here on Live in Las Vegas. When we come back, more of your phone calls, 257-5396, as well as some indicators that Nevada's home foreclosure rate may be improving. Stay with us here on the program. And at 115 in the Kid on Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, this report brought to you by the Salvation Army. Time to give yourself and someone else a fresh new start. Donate goods to the Salvation Army and help people in need. To schedule a pickup, call 1-800-SA-TRUCK or visit satruck.org. A couple of crashes on the 15 northbound, the Sahara on-ramp. Also, South 15 at Charleston, some shoulder activity there. 95 southbound at Casino Center, the off-ramp effect in the right shoulder. South 95 at Las Vegas Boulevard, you're still backed up past the spaghetti bowl there. 215 southbound north of Flamingo with some debris. Jones at the 95 and Boulder Highway at Nellis. For the Kid on Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas and News Talk 720 KDWN. Do you have unfiled tax returns or owe the IRS or state more than $10,000? If you don't take action now, your tax problem is going to get worse, much worse. Seizure of property, bank levies, wage garnishments, and potential criminal prosecution. And if you owe the IRS back payroll taxes, chances are you will be visited at your home or business by an IRS agent. Don't become paralyzed by fear. Take action now. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield for help. Our team of experienced tax attorneys can get you protected, stop collections, and negotiate a permanent settlement with the IRS and state, potentially saving you thousands of dollars. At U.S. Tax Shield, our tax advisors will review your case for free, inform you of your rights, and give you a guaranteed quote. No games and no tricky upsells. That's why we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Put an end to your torment. Get protected. Get the Shield. Call U.S. Tax Shield now at 800-881-9393. That's 800-881-9393. 800-881-9393. Hi, this is Doug Basham. You know, the guy you just can't get enough of. Or is that the guy you just love to hate? In either case, join me every Saturday afternoon at 3 for something a bit different. That's Saturday afternoons at 3 p.m. See you then. Dave Carney here inviting you to the all-new Live Las Vegas with me and my new co-host, Chad Forster. Every Friday from 1 till 2, Chad and I break down top Vegas news, sports from around the country, and entertainment in a really fun way. Yeah, that's right. Talk radio can actually be fun. Live Las Vegas every Friday at 1. Now, now, now back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Chad Forster. Yeah, welcome back to Live in Las Vegas. Dave Carney sitting alongside my co-host, Chad Forster. Welcome back to the program. Gorgeous day out here in Las Vegas. Now, if you can't get enough of Chad and myself, follow us 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Twitter. You can get me at Dapper Dave C, just like it sounds. You can also follow <laughs> Chad at Chad Tweet Stuff because he does tweet stuff randomly, but uh, it's it's some good tweeting. I was tweeting a little bit last night during yeah. the NBA draft. Uh, I tweeted a little bit yesterday watching that uh, soccer game. Yeah, that's right. Don't, excuse don't, me. You don't, you don't excuse have to me. say that under your excuse breath. Me. Football. Football game? Thank you. Yeah, the the U.S. losing to Germany. I was, Football. I uh, was tweeting it up storm, though, let me tell you. Let me, here's the great thing about soccer. Nobody can understand the, the way that this thing breaks down statistically. So even though the USA lost, we still won, uh, which is great. This yeah, we're back then. This is what Classic. you love. Classic. Uh, you know what? That, that's a total U.S. move backing in. Speaking of backing in, we're watching some uh, some stuff unfolding here on Fox News. Above us, uh, Congressman Ron Paul uh, is on with some of the jokers over at Fox News, breaking them hmm. down about uh, why, you know, going back into Iran, Iraq, Syria is just the wrong move. Uh, and, you know, uh, speaking of Ron Paul, I want to bring in his son to this conversation, Chad, because we were talking about the Tea Party on the other side of the break and still opening up the phone lines for your comments, 257-5396 at 7. 257 kdwn what do you think about the tea party becoming its own third party uh now congressman uh, ron paul's son Rand paul uh who's who's out of kentucky is looking like he's going to make a run for for president in 2016 you know you and i started to talk about something a little earlier didn't get much to it but nepotism uh, nepotism in the United States is becoming a larger and larger issue when it comes to our elected politicians uh, across the country and in various levels of politics. You know, what do you see as the biggest issue with nepotism overall? Well, I just think that it, it's just uh, the problem that I see is that it doesn't infuse new ideas, new blood, right? Because generally speaking, 
the son doesn't fall f- far from the father's tray. And a lot of times that there's who knows how these guys get in and stuff. I just think ultimately it's bad. I think we need new blood. We need new ideas, new energy, new direction. Obviously, the path we've been going down the last 20, 30 years is not the right path. It's not working, by the way. OK, everything's falling apart. I mean, the U.N. is in to help uh, people in Detroit because they can't pay their water bill. That's not a good sign. I mean, we've got uh, people shooting at border agents down on the border. We've got a helicopter from the Mexican coming across and, and, and engaging as well. I mean, not to mention what's going on in the Middle East and in Ukraine. I mean, there's all these different kinds of problems. And when you really start digging into the Middle East, you realize that it, we're pretty much the ones that started all this, right? And we end up funding these guys and giving these guys arms. I mean, ISIS is pretty much running around in our Humvees. However they got them or not, we messed up. That's bad on us. So when you go back to Rand Paul and, and Ron Paul, I like Ron Paul. His voting record's amazing. Rand Paul, not quite his father. And ultimately, I think there needs to be not just term limits. I, I'm proposing, like, severe term limits where it has to do with your family tree as well. Like, there needs to be a break. Like, three, you can take three terms of office, of any office, and then you're done, period. And then your son, it has to bypass him and go to your grandson if you really want to be involved in it. We need to encourage these guys to stop running for office because once they get in, that's what they do. Well, and and yeah, they don't solve any problems. They ab- just create problems. Absolutely. They turn into career politicians as opposed to career uh, problem get solvers. Back in, get back in and, and actually be productive. Well, and, you know, I guess from my, you know, from my point of view, when I, when I look at, you know, certain kinds of nepotism, I mean, in, in some cases you, you can actually see things uh, being handled well. I mean, uh, lineage being, you know, passed down through family trust and really trying to create, uh, you know, some sort of a legacy for the family but you know when we look at how the united states was established originally it was to get us away from this exact kind of thing uh basically taking away familial rights to uh governance to to property to power to all these things and then tying this back into where we sit currently with our situations in 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 both crimea in, in russia as well as the middle east we can look back to two three presidents ago's father and really find out where this kind of modern version has started. And and I think that you're right. When you look at, hey, the the father and the son, you know, while they may be different, probably don't differ too much. Uh, we've seen what that can do and, and the negative repercussions that that can have. Well, and not to mention, you mentioned, you know, the start of the country, second president of the United States, John Adams, sixth president of the United States, his son, John Quincy Adams. Right. Ninth president of the United States, William Henry Harrison, died within a month. His grandson, Benjamin Harry, Henry Harrison, was the 23rd president of the United States. Not to mention the Roosevelt's. I mean, so nepotism has been a problem since day one and then when you really look at it who runs i mean who ultimately is running this whole thing all of the presidents that have ever been president and there's been 43 because grover cleveland was counted twice as 22nd and 24th other than martin van buren can be traced back their family tree and this 12 year old girl did this oh, to was a, fantastic to a king in, in 1157 or whatever so when you really look at it we're, we're just an extension of, of of the british crown and then when you start looking at where the money goes and 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 how this is all tied into london and and the london banks and the federal reserve and it's just i mean we're getting to a point where it's just beyond ridiculous and and, and we're unfortunately seeing the consequences of that and and i just think there needs to be some severe things taken care of we've talked about term limits forever i'm saying take it one more step and make it generational term limits well it might not be a bad idea because uh if you if you again, if you're following Chad here and, and his line of thought, you know, basically breaking down, you know, the the origins of the country to a certain kind of an, uh, you know, an institutional family in England, I guess, you know, you can see the overall picture being pretty bleak that this has kind of been concentrated into a couple of people's uh, hands. And I think that that's where, again, t- you know, the Gallup poll that just comes out talking about, you know, more Americans wanting more parties, more Americans uh, choosing none of the above. I think that the population, uh, whether you feel conservatively about social issues, liberally about social issues the entire mass is saying listen we don't like the way that we're being represented and and you know honestly i know we we use it and overuse it uh, a lot when we think about how we got started but no representation uh, uh you know excuse representation, me, yeah exactly i mean this is what we're taxation all about without representation. Yeah, taxation without representation this is what we're all about and this is what uh, we really need to get back to especially now when the model of finance has has shed all of its, I guess, its you know, uh, preponderance. This is not something that you can you can sit back and say, oh well, we're going to be able to sustain the same model uh, of, of financial stability that we had years past. Which brings us to our next story here, and that's the foreclosure rate. Nevada's starting to, to seep. Why is this? Because the government has put in restrictions, not allowing full foreclosures to go through. So many analysts here, Chad, are, are talking about the Bush era years. Uh, 
as the, the being the real problem for this, but it was really the Clinton era years, then followed by the Bush era years, that led into such bad policy with homeowners and, and again with the economy in general. It's just it's real simple. You've got two sides that blame each other when ultimately they're they're both at fault. Uh, if you look at the Glass Steagall Act, which separated a lending house from a normal bank, and, and there was there was rules on it. That was actually re, t- uh, p- uh, repealed by the Clinton era. So you can blame Bush all you want, and Bush definitely has his hands dirty, both Bushes, 41 and 42. But ultimately, these guys are all on the same team, and that is to be as rich as possible and, and, and to usurp as much power as possible. And that's all that they do, period, end of story. That's why I say we need, you know, you know, like, uh, that was that guy, the plumber? Remember that guy? I'm not saying that guy specifically. Yeah, Joe the plumber, you remember? No, yeah, normal right. guys getting into Congress, not lawyers, not and, – and actually what their their job should do for two years or four years or six years, depending on what, what house they're in, is, re, is start repealing all of these stupid laws and all this legislation that is just – I mean, it, it's like a spider web on us, and it, and, and it, that slows down our economy. It just mucks things up, and ultimately, they're just out for themselves. I just get tired of it. I well, mean, housewives need to be running. Instead of going out and vote, don't get out and vote. Go out and run. We need 150 people running for mayor. We need 1,000 people running for that Senate seat, not two, in uh, my opinion. You know what? Listen, agreed, because here's, here's what ends up happening. You get the better people that are more able to campaign on actual issues that people want to have – uh, you know, either resolved, looked at, or highlighted, those are going to be the ones that are going to make it to the top as opposed to those that are just sitting back, you know, taking, you know, political contributions. Well, now, and most of these guys are, are positions of title, right? Most of these guys ha- are, are not normal people. They don't live everyday lives. They don't know what it's like to have to go and, and, and spend four dollars on a gallon of milk and all these kinds of different things and actually live their life because they're too busy running for their next office and garnering all this money and 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 you know inside trading and all this other stuff that goes on it's absolutely ridiculous we need people that actually know what it's like to be a regular person and they need to be fighting for us not fighting for banks not fighting for to you know keep gm alive or whatever that's bs i mean that's the other thing that happens in in this kind of economy you've got to let things die well, you know, you speak about letting things die. You also have to let things, uh, you know, come back up to the to the top if they're gonna uh, if they're gonna get you rebounded from this economy. One of the one of the things that uh, some Nevada groups are pushing for here, Chad, to get the economy back on track uh, here, at least in the state, is is a big push on gay marriage and marriage equality in general. Now, we know that that is going to be a hot topic because, uh, you know, Nevada has had a conservative background, and, and this is definitely one of those things that's outside the norm for a lot of uh, conservative-type states. So, uh, quickly, your thoughts here on what uh, marriage equality might mean as far as an economic boon. Well, I think that there – I mean, obviously, we've seen that in other places. Right. We've seen that where you have the marriage Absolutely. quality and there is a boon. Same thing with marijuana and those those types of things. And I know people have, you know, their issues with gay marriage, but ultimately I don't really care who you marry. And and and, and the other thing is I, I don't need permission from why do I need permission from the state on who I marry, who I don't marry? That's true. As long as it's not, you know, like I don't know. So I'm all for it. Go for it. Who cares? I don't care. It is, I was just gonna I say, don't as long be involved as it's not in your, your personal MacBook. life. MacBook was the guy we had in Florida. All right, and, uh, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, there's some ex- yeah exceptions. Okay, true. Can, okay, you don't care as long as it's or my a, Kindle. I'm not going to marry my Kindle. a consenting human adult. <laughs> yes. How's that? Okay, good. Uh, well, listen, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in in a bit, but we do have a, a caller here on our Max Prize hotline again two five seven fifty three ninety six. The number two five seven KDWN. James is on the line with us. James, you've got a comment here about term limits. Thanks for joining the program. Absolutely. As, as far as presidential, they already got them. And as far as people, uh, the lineage running, I don't really care. My big deal is when you've got a guy in Congress that's been there for 40 years. He's uh, That one guy retired from Congress at like 97 years old or some crap like that. Strom Thurmond and, yeah. and Charlie Rangel right now is currently the longest sitting. I agree with you. I agree with you I on mean, both of those. I mean, where does that come in? I mean, our founders... Pretty much, this was a volunteer thing. You go in, you do your job for a little while, you go back to becoming a productive member of society. This is uh, like our current, our Harry Reid. He's been around for so long. I mean, they, they are the hierarchy. They are the ruling class. Yeah, and James, you know, I agree with you. I and mean, Maybe my proposal is a little too extreme, but we need to shake this up a little bit because exactly, these career politicians are in 40, 50, 60 years. It's like we need new blood in there, new ideas. Give me something fresh. I mean, I, not to mention, like you said, get back in to the economy and, pr- and actually produce something other than just writing these BS laws and, 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 and looking for donations. Well, they have no touch with reality at that point in time. When you've been living in that kind of, of lap of luxury, you're part of the ruling class for 30 years. You don't have a grasp on what I live through, what you live through, what Tom, Dick, or Harry lives through. 
all you know is the you you are royalty, and it's not cool. No, it's not, and I think Hillary Clinton is a great example of that. The other day, how out of touch she is, saying that she was dead broke when they left the White House, which wasn't true. Right. I live in my house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or go try to live in Detroit where you can't pay your water bill. I mean, that's just, that, you know, it's offensive. Did you say the U.N. was covering that? Yeah, the U.N. is coming in to because uh, water is a nat- natural human right. that they have pro- the crap out of my country. They are, they are not supposed to be here messing on our soil. That no, no, that that's another thing. This this is working way towards that world government crap, bro. I don't want to sound conspiracy theorist, but you know everybody's a citizen of the world now. No, no, we're United States citizens. This is where we need to take care of first. All right, thanks so much, James. And we're gonna step aside, take another look at traffic here on Live in Las Vegas when we come back, kicking off the World Cup here on the Sports Carnival. Stay tuned. Dress for Success Southern Nevada for their third annual Power Walk on Saturday, July 26th. Registration is at 7.30 a.m. It's a fun one-mile walk that benefits Dress for Success Southern Nevada, dedicated to empowering disadvantaged women seeking to find a job and start a career. It's a power walk that's inside at the Miracle Mile Shops at Planet Hollywood. Hosting the event is Beasley Broadcasting's own Carla Ray from the KKLZ Morning Show. For AP more- Update. I'm Carlotta Bradley. The president wants a half billion dollars to expand existing aid to moderate rebels in Syria. AP White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. Right now, U.S. spy agencies handle what training and arming there is. But now the president's seeking approval for an overt program to bolster moderate groups in the Syrian opposition. The move reflects increasing confidence of senior officials here that they've got opposition leaders they can deal with and increasing alarm at the lightning advance of radical Sunni groups across the border in Iraq. State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf. We had expanded the scale and scope of our assistance. We don't detail all of that, Um, but we have continued to ramp it up. Uh, And we do believe this new effort is really complementary to what we've already done, and we'll just build on the work that we've already done. There's increased U.S. concern. Conflicts in Syria and Iraq are becoming an intertwined fight against the same Sunni extremist group. AP Update, I'm Carlotta Brad. The news brought to you by Farmers Insurance. At Farmers Insurance, they believe the more you know, the better you can plan. Find your local agent at Farmers.com or call 888-96-FARMERS. Brought to you by Farmers Insurance. It's 132 on the Kid on the Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center. Got a couple of new incidents since we last spoke. 15 southbound, that's north of Lake Mead. Also south 15 north of Washington, both in the early stages. 215 northbound as you merge and go eastbound Summerlin Parkway. 95 southbound, that's at Las Vegas Boulevard. And that's got things backed up just about to the spaghetti bowl. Starting to pick up just a little but uh, it's still slow through there. 15 northbound, that's south of Charleston, and there is some delays there, some shoulder activity. 15 south north of Washington and Flamingo at the 15. For the Kid on the Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas on News Talk 720 KDWN. We hear a lot of talk about income inequality and how the government wants to fix it. Now you can fix it yourself. At AvengeSoftware.com, we're helping people start a new business to take control of their financial future, a new way to replace your job and retire early, all by working two hours a day. Call us today at 844-AVENGE-1 for a free trial. That's 844-AVENGE-1. And listen to our radio show, Avenging the 99%, on Sundays at 8 a.m. on KDOM. You hear a lot of talk about gold these days. What, with the stock market and more upheaval than tumbleweeds in a tornado? The world-famous Max Pond is your gold spot in Las Vegas. Don't just send your gold into some random TV guy for pennies on the dollars. Go where you can see what your gold is really worth and get guaranteed market rate for your gold, silver, diamonds, and more. Come visit the world-famous Max Pond in Las Vegas at the northeast corner of Sahara and Jones or online at maxpondlv.com. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Every time I rev my engine down an open stretch of road, I'm glad I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Because nothing feels better than saving money with Geico. Except maybe the time I saved a life. A squirrel's life. Gave that little feller mouth to mouth and then he bit me. On second thought, saving money with Geico probably feels better. 
Geico Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. Summertime. Nothing beats a smoky barbecue burger, a refreshing summer cocktail, and a thrilling joyride through Gotham City. These are the new sounds of summer at Dave & Buster's. Right now, you can play four hot new games free. Batman, Mock Storm, Octoscore, just some of ten all-new games. Plus, get new drinks and food from the Maker's Mark Grill. Get to the summer of games at Dave & Buster's to play free today. Batman is trademarked and copyrighted by DC Comics S14. Offer valid through July 6, 2014. Visit DaveAndBusters.com for details. Now, 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 back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Chad Forster. And welcome back to Live in Las Vegas. I'm Dave Carney sitting alongside Chad Forster. Thanks so much for joining us today on the program. Hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. Now, if you are at home, want to listen to us uh, inside on your computer, all you have to do is pull up kdwn.com. That's kdwn.com. And you can stream the entire episode uh, right there from the lap of luxury, the laptop. Uh, James brought me back to the lap of luxury. Great call there uh, on our Max Prize hotline as well, Chad, talking about term limits. And, uh, you know, obviously it doesn't affect everybody the same way that it, it potentially does you. You've obviously got some strong thoughts and feelings. But I, I think one. I'm fired up. I, I, I can say that <laughs> you're, you're fine. You know, it's a good thing you don't have any kids. They'd be fired up, too. Yeah. Uh, the the thing I, 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 I'm pretty sure that everybody can get behind now, uh, especially looking at our current climate, is uh, we've got to address some, you know, in some way the issue of how we're being governed and who is actually doing that. Because it doesn't seem, and I try daily, I really do try to find somebody like I, I, I'm so thrilled with my congressman. My senator gets me. Um, no, these are all millionaires. I mean, we basically have gotten into a point where uh, the, the folks that are in the 1% are the folks that are firmly entrenched into the entire, uh, into both houses, uh, you know, and the executive branch as well. There doesn't seem to be any relation to the average person. And we have accepted this for a long time in this country. We have accepted uh, basically those with the most means uh, are the ones that should be running the political office. But what we're finding out is that is the exact, opposite just because you are good at running a business which means maximizing profits does not mean you are going to be good at running a country running people uh you know conversely you can be the biggest uh, you know a, a social proponent somebody that wants to give away the farm that also does not make you a necessarily good governor in in any way actually i mean depending on your point of view if you look at it from their point of view they're running it exactly how they want to so they're actually perfect yeah. i mean amongst themselves they think things are splendid Amongst the people that they're actually governing, yeah, it's bad. It's not. I mean, it's not You're good right. for anybody. So, I mean, that that to me is an even bigger issue. Again, not only being out of touch, but with a different agenda. And then the agenda that's presented to us is completely different than what actually happens. What you run on, you know, what what, what Obama ran on was completely the opposite, right? Change from George Bush. God, we got to get out of all these wars. We got to, you know, we got to shut down all these prisons. We got to we got to share our board. And it's been the exact opposite. As a matter of fact, he's just followed the Bush plan. So I don't see the difference. Yeah, there's, at this point, we're at 12 years of the same guy. No, absolutely. And I mean, there, there's obviously been some small differences. And I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of our friends here that uh, that are diehard calling themselves Republicans, diehard Republicans would tell you a number of the reasons Obama is different than Bush. Uh, but when we first brought this this program over here to uh, K-Don, my first sentiment was there's really no difference between Barack Obama and George Bush, uh, save for some very cosmetic uh, differences. That's, I'll that's you, really I'll, the biggest difference. I'll tell you the difference. Uh, Obama likes to spend his time on the golf course on the basketball right. court. And, and, <laughs> and W likes to spend his time at a ranch amongst right. cows that he's afraid of. That's right. Because he's ultimately, these the Bushes, read anything about the Bushes. They're from Massachusetts. They're, they're carpetbaggers, and they pretend like they're ranchers. And it's BS. No, I know. It's all a lie. Exactly. You know what? You know who is most upset about that? Guys like Rick Perry. Like, you're trying to steal yeah, my thunder, boy. Exactly. You know, Look at my cowboy hat. You know, speaking of W, though, and, and we brought at the uh, beginning of the program Hillary Clinton's uh, new book, Hard Choices, having a, a very hard time selling. I remember George's memoir, and I, I, <laughs> I thought it was great. I read it four times. It was The Little Engine That Could. It was 17 <laughs> pages long of the... Uh, you know, the most inspirational reading I've ever that's had. That's the George W. Bush. It was in the George right, W. That. Bush Library. There's two books in there, and <laughs> that that's was, one of them. That was one of them. The other one was a coloring a book. A coloring book. That's exactly right. what I was going to say. Um, all right, guys. Well, speaking about running all over the place and uh, what they run on is actually what they are delivering. We're going to jump into our sports carnival. Covering the sports stories that come from everywhere. It's time for the sports carnival with Chad and Dave. 
All right, guys, the sports carnival. Yeah, we're talking about guys that are running on stuff, running on a pitch. And I'm going to tell you what, for the uninitiated to soccer, which makes about how football. many American? Yeah, football. Football. Me, football. The uninitiated to uh, world football, uh, we are seeing uh, this World Cup really be brought uh, to the table with massive audience ratings. But I think folks are just like, man, they play on a really big pitch. Now, it's called a pitch, obviously, not a field. Um it's been exciting. I just don't know, Chad, that outside of the World Cup, soccer's got much legs in the U.S. And we were talking about this having a tipping point. But without commercial breaks, brother, I mean, yeah. how do we sell this thing on American know. TV? I don't know. Other than, you know, sponsorships on jerseys and, I mean, obviously have the halftime and pregame and all that kind of stuff. But you're right. It's not necessarily made for U.S. television. But at the same time, I do think that there is a groundswell of popularity. And I can see why. I'll be honest with you. Being a sports guy, you know, I've been in sports for a long time. I never really looked at soccer never really paid attention i knew guys that played it you know i always just looked at it as like wow that's a lot of running i don't my, my yeah, that's a lot of running I'm, I'm, absolutely I'm, chubby kids not it's not fat guy sport <laughs> there's that's one thing about it okay baseball bartolo cologne right, fat guy right uh, i mean basketball i mean there's boris dio boris dio kind of a chubby guy there you go not one chubby guy even the goalie you would think well maybe the goalie would be a little bigger I mean, this is a, an intense sport. It's exciting. And one of the things that I think that they can sell, because to me, to me, it's the most appealing, is the anticipation of that goal because goals are so finite. You're only going to have two or three of them. And when they come, I mean, the celebration. And one thing I really have kind of been attracted to this is, is, the, is the people that watch, the fans. They're just fun. I mean, there's all this dancing and cheering through the whole entire game, and it's just it's just a cool atmosphere. I've been really impressed. Outside of FIFA being a criminal organization, I, I think that this has been a, a, a grand slam. Yeah, well, yeah, no, no pun intended or to steal from uh, our friends over there on the baseball diamond. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this, this has definitely been a, a big, big stage, uh, a big showing for U.S. soccer, too, which, by the way, advances to the round of 16. Now, they're going to play Belgium, which – is a powerhouse mm. in the world of football. Yeah, Germany to Belgium, not not necessarily not, making anything easier. No, and, and talk about anticipations for the goals. I mean, USA had to wait the entire 90 minutes in anticipation for a goal that never came against <laughs> Germany, and they may have to wait another entire 90 minutes in anticipation of another goal uh, that possibly won't come against Belgium. But, you know, I, I think that when we look at soccer in, in 2014, coming forward into 2015, so this World Cup uh, is gone. Okay, after 2014, great. It's going to be another four years until the next. I think between now and then, though, we're going to see a major U.S. sports carrier, maybe Fox Sports 1, maybe uh, NBC Sports, maybe, I don't know if it'll go to ESPN's level, but one of the other major sports carriers pick up and deliver I mean, actual consistent soccer coverage because there are some games that are played on ESPN. You get some of the uh, English Premier League games that are played on ESPN at various times, but it's not a consistent program. Right. Um, it's, I think a, it's a filler, basically. It's, it's a filler, exactly, because the odd times that it comes in, I mean, being played halfway around the world, it's, you know, 2 o'clock well, in the morning here. And they used to get bumped by, you know, cup stacking championships yes, and, stuff yeah. and things of that. I mean, that's when you know you're kind of – but I think it's changed. And, and what Fox did with trying with the UFC, I think you're right. They might be one of those. That's a network that usually has a, a – you know, they'll stick their neck out occasionally. I, I could see that happen. And obviously – it's, someone's looking at it. When they look at these ratings on TV, they're like, God, can we can we translate this on a, on a regular basis or is it just a niche thing because it's only four years? I don't know. It seems to me that it might have turned a corner, and I'm looking forward to it because with all these arenas here in, in Vegas, we're going to get a soccer team. Well, it would make a lot of sense. I mean, Or uh, a hockey team or both. You know, I, I mean, both would be preferable. I mean, I think we could support both. The soccer, though, to me makes the most sense because if you look at Nevada's Hispanic population, uh, Nevada carries about 40% of its uh, population are Hispanic. Um, out of those 40% Hispanics in the state, uh, about 80% of them, Chad, live within uh, a fairly defined section of the city, uh, very near to downtown, and a lot of the facilities where a proposed soccer stadium uh, would be built to house an MLS team. Now, I think that that's where, if we're going to have soccer succeed as an American sport, as, as something that we're going to buy into as an American public and consume on a regular basis, Major League Soccer is going to need need to be the televised product. I mean, the English Premier Leagues, uh, while it's uh, most likely superior uh, football, soccer, what whatnot, 
it doesn't have the same cachet that no. American name teams would. Yeah. So Real Salt Lake versus uh, the LA Galaxy, well, it does something for us. And I know we're going to get to the NBA here real quick, but I, if I was MLS, I would look at the NBA model. What you do is you, you, you build up a league that these guys from outside the country want to come play good at. Point. And you get that English league. We start bleeding those guys dry of all their good players. We have something that's that's worth building on. I th- that could happen very, very easily. Well, and you know, it, it basically started, I mean, a number of years back when David Beckham signed a contract with, right. the, with the LA Galaxy and of course David Beckham now retired from the world of professional soccer yeah, but he's bending it somewhere else uh, he's, yeah he's bending it so I think him and his wife are like you know <laughs> bending it uh you know around the corner man I know I would I now it, it, that's one of those those situations wow <laughs> that's one of those situations where you look at he was the biggest star in the sport and he comes to the American side uh so good stuff there now speaking of uh you're right a, another league here who has reached its uh reached its wide arms and reach around the international community uh not not just Europeans, but, you know, Asia, everywhere that it can. The NBA, the National Basketball Association last night had its uh, had its annual draft. And, Chad, this was one of the most anticipated NBA drafts in a number of years. They, a lot of folks are calling this the deepest NBA draft in more than a decade since LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and Carmelo Anthony came out in 2003. What did you see last night? Were you most surprised by another Canadian going number one, the slip of Joe yeah. Embiid? What were you most surprised about? Actually, and what I was waiting for, and it happened towards the end, was was Shabazz Napier, the, the point guard out, out of Connecticut. I thought he was going to go a lot higher than that. I think that there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to regret that. Ultimately, he was he was selected by the Charlotte Hornets, and now he's going to end up with the Heat because they made a trade. Uh, and I think they get P.J. Harrison out of the deal and some other stuff. But I'm not surprised about the Canadians. Andrew Wiggins is great. I think him at number one makes sense to me. Uh, Milwaukee, if you look at what Jabari Parker, wanted to go there to begin with. Joel Embiid, I thought, would actually have slipped a little bit more. Right. But just to be selfish, being a Celtic fan, Marcus Smart, great pickup for, for Boston. And then they got James Young out of Kentucky. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy. Um, there was a couple of other. There was like a guy. Who was that guy? Adrian Payne, I believe. Yeah. One of these guys that no one really heard of. And they're like, why would you select that guy? Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, no, it was Bruno. Uh, Bruno. Kabaka. Uh, that's right. And uh, the Toronto yeah. Raptors made a real reach with him. They're like, who the hell is this guy? Well, and, you know, I mean, Toronto, obviously, the only international city in the NBA it has a tendency, at least they've shown over the last you know take number risks. of years, to take risks, oh, to take foreign risks, uh, because their uh, their population is obviously um, uh, you know more um, used to, I guess, the foreign players than some of our uh, American counterparts were. But they took a big risk there. Now I- I've got to you know ask you again about this Joel Embiid. Now if you listen to the show last week, Chad and I were talking about the injury that is actually sidelined uh, Joel Embiid, who was predicted to go number one overall uh, to the Cleveland Cavaliers. This was the same injury that derailed the career of Yao Ming, derailed the career of Bill Walton. Uh, Michael Jordan also had a similar injury. Obviously, he came out uh, okay. Do you think you that... Think? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Because he, he had that like 86. It was, or his eight, second, it was the second season. Yeah, yeah. Eight, 87 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, came back to score 63 points well, on one your of Boston the things Celtics. I've understood about that, uh, about that injury is the, the smaller you are, the easier it is to come back. The bigger you are, the harder it is. Well, geez, he's a big boy. He's a big guy. I don't know. It's a bit of a risk, but you know, I hope the best for the 76ers and Joel Embiid. Well, that's the second year in a row they have taken an injured uh, power forward or center at the top of the nice draft move. last year, Nerlens Noel. So hopefully they get him back this year. All right, guys, we're going to step aside, take our final look at traffic here on Live in Las Vegas. And when we come back, Chad Forster is going to break us down with a community calendar, a look at entertainment, and a special guest joining us here on the program. Stay with us. At 147 in the kid on Run Nevada Credit Union Traffic Center, several problems on Interstate 15. Southbound, that's north of the 93. Southbound 15 also crashes at Lake Mead and north of Washington. 15 northbound, that's south of Charleston, slowing things down there in that corridor. 15 north at Prim for those coming to Las Vegas. Flamingo at the 15 and Rampart at Vegas Drive. From the Kid on Monday Better Credit Union Traffic Center, I'm Jim Dallas on News Talk 720 KDWN. Attention men, are you one of the millions suffering from ED? Has Viagra or Cialis failed you? Are you suffering from low T or just wish you could last longer? New Male Medical Center can help you discover the new you. Their doctors offer state-of-the-art FDA-approved treatments that are 98% effective. You'll see results on your very first visit. Their treatments will work even when Viagra and Cialis have failed. 
Guaranteed. Call New Mail Medical Center at 702-505-4414 today to schedule your no-obligation appointment. Calling now is the best decision you will ever make for your sexual health. Join the thousands of patients who are no longer suffering because they had the courage to call. 702-505-4414. That's 702-505-4414. New Mail Medical Center. Discover the new you. 702-505-4414. That's 702-505-4414. KDWN's John Schaefer here inviting you to the High Roller Block Party at the Link this Saturday, June 28th from 12 noon to 2 p.m. You know, the High Roller is the world's largest observation wheel. We'll have $5 off tickets for locals, plus free tickets and free games like skee-ball, golf, whack-a-mole, and Dance Dance Revolution. Bring the whole family to the High Roller Block Party at the Link this Saturday, June 28th from noon till 2. Happy Friday and congratulations to the USA soccer team for moving on to the round of 16 in this year's World Cup. This is Chad Forster from KDON 720's Pawn Talk Live and live in Las Vegas to give you today's precious metal report brought to you by Max Pawn of Las Vegas, located on the northeast corner of Sahara and Jones. All the medals this week are still rising slightly from last week's close. Today's precious metal prices, gold sitting at 1318, silver 2115, and platinum. 1476. Do you need extra cash this weekend? Visit Max Pond to sell your own one at gold, silver, platinum, coins, diamonds, watches, art, antiques, designer handbags, and more. Mention Chad sent you from Pond Talk Live, and they'll give you a few extra bucks. For free phone estimates or questions, call 702-253-7296. That's 702-253-7296. Max Pond, where luxury meets value, open every day, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on the corner of Sahara and Jones. Have a great weekend. Hi, this is Michael Mack, owner of world-famous Max Pond in Las Vegas. You ever wondered what those valuables are worth? Had a pond question but didn't know who to ask? I have the solution for you. Join me and Dave Carney every Friday from 2 to 3 for Pond Talk Live here on News Radio 720 KDWN. Now, now, Now back to Live Las Vegas with Dave Carney and Chad Forster. And welcome back to Live in Las Vegas here on News Talk 720 KDWN, streaming worldwide at LiveInLasVegasRadio.com, also at KDWN.com. You can follow the gang 24 hours a day on Twitter, at Chad Tweet Stuff. And, of course, if you're a brave Twitter follower, you can follow me, at Dapper Dave C. You never know uh, what it is that I'm going to post up there, Chad. Sometimes it's pictures from my you know high-level events like the NHL Awards. Sometimes oh, it's listen stuff, to you, name dropper. Sometimes it's stuff from my uh, neighborhood juice bar when I go and pick up my juice. And, I, and it, it could be as mundane as that. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because Dave did. He was the voice of God in the NHL Awards. I watched them. Uh, what was that, Tuesday night? That was, uh, Tuesday, that was Tuesday night. Tuesday, 4 yes. o'clock, uh, and it was on what, NBC, NBC Sports. Sports, and you nailed it. You Thank knocked you. it out of the park. Not only that, you did the red carpet. You took a lot of selfies with all these different celebrities. I mean, it right. was really. I mean, it was a really cool thing. And actually, I have to say, I enjoyed the awards. And PK Subban, he, I never thought. I mean, any of these guys, because a lot of these hockey guys, they're just not necessarily the most sociable guys. But he did like this reporting job, and he nailed. It. He was awesome. Yeah, he was fantastic. And you know, the, the obviously the star of the show was George Strombolopoulos. And was, I didn't know who that guy was, but he nailed it well, too. Well, he is basically he's he's a real big deal in Canada. And now, when I first got to work with George three years back, I, at the first time I did the awards in 2011 i didn't know who he was either and i thought they were misspelling george strong <laughs> uh, george Str- uh, stepanopoulos right. name and i thought oh you mean george stepanopoulos they're like no this is george strombolopoulos he's he's super big in he's canada. the chris berman of canada oh basically. man and you know well he's but talented he, exactly yes thank you <laughs> What are you talking about here? I don't know. I don't uh, know if, if Strom's hawking uh, Applebee's up listen, there. Listen, the, sure. the only thing that I think that Berman does better than anybody still uh, is say the Raiders. When he says the Raiders, I like I, that. And, that's what I like. And back, 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 back. I don't mind that. That's true. Except for during the home run derby. I mean, everything's a home run. Can you stop it with that? Yeah. Ah, come on. You know, we get it. He's he's a bit of a hack. That's right. Well, you know, he, he was is, cool in the '80s, though. I was going to say back then, blowhards were uh, we're having a <laughs> we're having a good run then, man. It was the trickle down era. Um, all right, back. Back here on the show, guys, uh, we've got some big news we're going to inform you about later on right at the end of the program. Uh, but Chad has taken a look at our community as a whole and put together for us a great community calendar for this weekend. So, Chad, uh, what are we looking at this weekend? What are some of the cool events that we can attend? Well, the Vegas Cheer Authority will be hosting a barbecue. That's tomorrow, 5 to 8 p.m. at the Vegas Cheer Authority. That is on North 5th Street, 3630 North 5th Street. All the proceeds are going to be divided between the Wounded Warrior Project and the National Fa- Fallen firefighter foundation 
Uh, so go check that out. Also, there's a nice little fireworks booth right up the road. Team McKenzie's is hosting a fireworks booth at the parking lot of Albertsons right there on West Flamingo and Hualapai. Now, that's going to benefit the candle lighters in honor of uh, McKenzie Lynn Hanover, who lost her battle with brain cancer in 2011. So that's going to go, uh, obviously, from tomorrow until July 4th. Go up and get your fireworks, and obviously those donations go to candle lighters, which is pretty cool. And then uh, something else that I that I had found was this one-day live auction will feature 500 lots of antiques, toys, coin ops, advertising art, neon signs, cash registers, collectibles, all of this tomorrow, uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Victorian Casino Antiques, 4520 Arville Street, number one. I thought that sounded kind of cool. You might be able to pick up some kind of... You know, some kind of relic from Vegas. You know, a lot of people like that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure do. I'd like to go. Like and, an old uh, slot machine in your house. It kind of looks cool. I thought maybe I could pick up an older cheerleader at the Vegas Cheer Authority thing. You know, take, I, take one of the lower hanging fruit. I, I, you you might, don't think so? You might be able to wrap that yeah, up. I'm not going to say. Um, I got a little inside <laughs> info. I'll tell you off the air. Okay. <laughs> right on, man. Uh, well, that's great stuff. Uh, we're going to take a look at entertainment as well in just a second. Right now, guys, uh, we have got Nicole joining us from Interactive Organics. Nicole, thanks for joining us here today on the program. Nicole, uh, how are you? Doing well, great. How are you today? Fantastic. Nicole, uh, we are told that you have a great new juice shop opening up downtown. Why don't you tell us about that? Yes, we opened our doors called Grassroots Juice Bar, and we opened up last Wednesday. So today is day nine. We are located on uh, 6th and Carson, right on the 6th Street side in this Unit 160. Um, we're serving Whole food juices, smoothies, uh, smoothies that have caffeine in them, uh, coffee beans, uh, teas, and uh, everything's organic and uh, locally and regionally uh, selected. Wow. Now, Dave and I were talking a little about juice. I kind of got into to juices a while ago, so I've, I've got a juice book and all that kind of stuff. And I was telling Dave, you know, one of these great juices, especially after you get done working out because of lac lactic acid, is, is like a carrot celery apple. The celery really helps in those situations. Do you guys do those kinds of varieties, or do you have a set list? We do have uh, varieties, and we also are able to do custom orders. So we do have a lot of people coming in post-workout. Uh, we have a Bidicino that we make that has beets, great for your blood. Uh, anything that really you're, you lean towards, we can make. Um, we have a wide selection and a wide variety, but we do have um, smoothies and whole food juices uh, geared towards you know your needs. And, and you said it earlier, but I think it's really important because especially nowadays people are aware of this, it's all organic. Yeah, we, it's, it's organic, and we actually like to say it's beyond organic. Uh, my partner Shane Stewart and I went and visited all the farmers um, that we are – we are getting our produce from and shook hands with them, looked at their practices. Some of them don't have the certified organic, uh, you know, certification, I should say, but they have they have practices that are more sustainable and beyond organic than just getting that certification. So they're they're putting olive oil on they're you know, they're using fish emulsion in order to, um, you know, for pesticides instead. So it's just a, it's a fascinating um, something we're very comfortable with way to uh to farm well it sounds fantastic and i tell you what i mean i'm personally a, a huge juicer i love going out picking my own uh fruits and vegetables this cuts off a lot of the uh the work for that and also saves me about uh six hours a day uh in yeah. the kitchen nicole thanks so much <laughs> for joining us here today on live in las vegas once again tell the folks where they can come down and visit you i appreciate it we are uh, located in the john e carson motel it's been revamped it's on the a corner of 6th and Carson. Our address is 124 South 6th Street, Unit 160. Awesome. Well, when I'm downtown this weekend at the Container Park, hobnobbing with all the big celebrities that, uh, you know, hang on at Fremont Street, I'm going to come down. I'm going to get myself a smoothie because... You're going to juice up. Not, I, not Jose Canseco no, juiced up, but you're exactly. going to juice up. I, you know, listen, at this point, I'm almost willing to try that. Do you know I mean? I can see <laughs> why people go ahead and get on this juicing thing because, you know, the results, it takes forever to get. I'm drinking protein shakes. I'm I, eating, you know, pounds of almonds a day. I mean, I, you know, I, I eat more, you know, as you have eloquently said, uh, tuna than a large jungle cat. This guy eats a right out of the can it's disgusting it's, and it stinks up the joint and irritates the crap out of me well but he, he, it, it's 15 minutes i gotta eat seriously exa yeah exactly every 15 <laughs> minutes i have to eat that's why me doing this for two hours is so hard so if i'm getting edgier as the show goes on uh, i apologize guys uh we're right here at the end of the program we have pawn talk live coming up right after us but chad and i have a fairly big announcement want to share with you guys starting July 7th, 2014, 7714. You can listen to Live in Las Vegas with Dave and Chad every Monday through Friday.
from 3 to 4 o'clock right here on News Talk 720 KDWN. So for Chad Forrester, I'm Dave Carney. Stick with us here after another look at traffic for Pond Talk Live. to refinance your auto loan with One Nevada before August 30th and you'll be automatically entered for a chance to have your entire car loan paid off up to $25,000. Call 702-457-1000 or visit OneNevada.org for current rates and details. One Nevada is open to all Clark County and Huron residents federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. Luxury shops in Las Vegas aren't new. What is new, however, is luxury meeting value. At the world-famous Max Pond, we specialize in marrying the two. With some of the finest selections of watches, designer handbags, sunglasses, and more, the luxury never stops. Every day, new items are added in-store and online. From Gucci and Chanel to Hermes and Louis Vuitton, Max Pond delivers all the top luxury brands at a fraction of the price. Visit us online at maxpondlv.com or browse our showroom in Las Vegas. The world-famous Max Pond, where luxury meets value. Thank you. 